Robert Erdman. He invented a scientific method to uh, take pictures, uh, and not only, of uh, these beautiful Euronymous bush. I think not only of this. Can you explain the method you use for this? Uh, yes, we uh, bring our own equipment into the museum when we visit a, a painting and uh, the painting is generally taken off the wall and then we have a very standardized way to configure the lights and uh, we have a special uh, harness for the camera which allows us to move the camera, um, take a photo and then move the camera and take another photo and move the camera and so on. So for one painting we may take hundreds of separate photographs and then we do this with different kinds of cameras. We have an infrared camera and infrared light is interesting because it's going through the layers of paint so that one can see if there's something drawn behind or painted behind the painting which has been covered up. Uh, we also have radiographs of the paintings um, just like a normal x-ray for a person which uh, allows us to see all the way through the painting and to see the wood uh, that supports the painting and also sometimes to see parts of the, the painting beneath what we can see. And then when we leave the museum we have uh, hundreds of gigabytes of photos for one painting. And then uh, my job is to write uh, new software which will take all of these images and first find how they should be placed relative to each other because we took so many pictures uh, of, of a painting and to, to do what we call stitching. So we, we fuse the photos together into a single photo which has no uh, seams. So we, we're very careful about the lighting but even so there's still a little bit of difference between the brightness on one corner and another corner. So if we would just take the photos and put them on top of each other, it would not look nice. It would look like you have a, a line at the end of one photo and the beginning of the next. So uh, the next thing that we do is when we then stitch these, we have one image that's covering the entire painting in the visible light. We have another image in the infrared. We have another image at a different wavelength of infrared. We have another image that's x-ray, and each of these images is many gigabytes. And then the final step is to perform what's called registration. And so if you have a photo in the visible light and a photo in the infrared, the computer finds a way to bring them together perfectly so that they would align uh, down to the single pixel. Um, and this is quite a challenge because when we stitch these photos together, sometimes we have 100,000 pixels across from the left side to the right side. So one, um, one image is maybe 10 gigapixels. Uh, in not megapixels, but gigapixels. Yes, so 10,000 megapixels. This is the incredible part. Uh, one picture, 40. 40 gigabytes, gigabytes sometimes, it's yes. Absolutely enormous. And that's enormous. 40 gigabytes for each. We have 40 gigabytes for the visible, and 40 gigabytes for the raking light from the side, and 40 gigabytes for the infrared, and 40 gigabytes for the x-ray, and so on. And then the final piece is uh, to, to develop a new technology that allows us to view these images online, over the internet. So, um, essentially this is the basic problem because our team is distributed across the world. We have some people here in Venice, uh, we have people, I used to be in Arizona in the United States, we have some people in Maastricht, we have uh, Amsterdam, we have Nijmegen and so on. And so in order for us to all access these images, it's not practical for me to send a 40 gigabyte image to someone else. Instead, I have to make a server, which is in the cloud, and then I, I process the images in a special way so that they can be downloaded very quickly um, at whatever resolution we want. And then um, we, we have a new technology that allows us to, to view all of the images on top of each other and to peel away the layers. So you peel away the top and you see the infrared, or you can remove the infrared and see the x-ray. Uh, this is what I call the curtain viewer, because it's like lifting the curtain, or it's like pulling back the curtain.
And so with the curtain viewer, we have the ability to, to show the images all at once without needing to have one image and then open another program and load the other image and then kind of find the same place. We make it uh, what I call frictionless. We try to make it as easy as possible to, to get access to the images and to zoom in to exactly what one would like and then to go back and forth between, for example, here in Venice, before restoration, after restoration, or before restoration, during restoration, after restoration. And this helps a lot. That's, uh, that's what they tell me, yes. They said that it completely changed the way that they performed their restoration because they had to be uh, extremely careful so in a way it makes their job harder because they, they know that we can see everything. We can see every little change that they make. Um, but uh, this is the way it's always worked. When, historically, when infrared was first invented to look at paintings, then the restorer changes the way they work because they can see what's under. And then we have x-ray. This changed the way the restorer works because now they can see the structure that's supporting it. Um, and so when you have very, very high resolution images, so we can fly all the way down into a crack, um, then it means that you, you really know what you start with, you really know what you end with, um, and it allows us to make better decisions. Are you going to do these uh, on all the paintings and the works at the Rick Museum? Um, well, all the paintings in the world would be quite a challenge, but yeah, we, we, we work in projects, and so uh, I work at the Rijksmuseum now, and so we're doing this technique for many of our paintings. For example, we have a very nice Rembrandt collection uh, in the Rijksmuseum. Um, we do this for drawings, uh, we're doing this for some works by Brofel, um, and, and so uh, the technologies that were developed for the Bosch project are quite general. They're not specific to the Bosch project. So we can use the same technology on any kind of images, um, even cell phone pictures. Um, we also uh, now have the ability to do things in three dimensions. So I work on sculptures now too, so that we can fly around a sculpture in 3D and fly all the way in and see before and after restoration. Um, and, and so, uh, Really, it's a set of technologies that I would say are at, at a foundation that we can build new things on top of because it's allowing us to see the highest resolution images ever taken of paintings um, across multiple wavelengths uh, from anywhere in the world and with any device that's connected to the internet. So you can, you can look at the paintings on your phone. Thank you. Yes. Thank you very much.